Hey there, it's Pete Checkley for SampleLibraryReview.com and today I'm checking out Perf Perk Volume 1 from Performance Samples. Performance samples have a rich history of developing really interesting, intriguing and innovative virtual instruments and today I'm looking at their first foray into the world of percussion. With so many percussion libraries out there, what makes this one stick out from the crowd and more importantly, will it find its way into our workflow? Perf Perk Volume 1 downloads at 5.31 gigabytes. There are eight different instrument types and performance source hits with up to 15 dynamic layers. Articulations are hits and playable roles. There are crossfade roles with both roll to hit, accented and normal releases. Bonus materials such as rubs, scrapes and crescendos. They are recorded with Hall and Decca mics at 48kHz and 24-bit audio. Full contact 5.8.1 is required and Perf Perk Volume 1 sells for $279 over at PerformanceSamples.com. So where Perf Perk really excels is there are so many different instruments and different timbres. It's not a typical orchestral library with just timpanis. Uh, it, it's got, you know, surdos from Brazil. It's got snare drums, taikos. It, it's got a little bit of everything. And mixing all these timbres together, you come out with some really, really exceptional ensembles. So I've programmed a couple of performances. They are still quite basic because I want everyone to hear the timbre of the drums and how well they sound as opposed to sort of programming where it could get a little bit messy or a little bit a little bit lost in the mix I suppose. I've done some very slight panning as well and these instruments speak for themselves so I'm just going to let these three performances run. So before I dive in, it's really important to understand the big innovation from performance samples is they've sampled repeated performances of these instruments, not just single instruments being hit in a variety of different ways. So the idea is you're going to create really human performances as though there's an ensemble of percussion players in front of you and not a stiff, lifeless performance of robotic drumming which again is all down to the programming and how well used the instrument but performance samples make this effortless so i've just loaded up the bongos and you can see we have the usual performance samples gui i'm not going to talk about that too much i'm just going to dive in and let you hear the instrument Okay, so you get the idea that the instrument is typical performance samples, high quality, uh, it's really well sampled, sounds fantastic, but there's some really intriguing ways you can use this instrument. So as the same with each instrument, you have your colour keys, which trigger the instrument performance. Now, most instruments have two blue keys and there's only two hits and one roll and the bongos has a higher hit so there's a lot more tonal variation now the interesting thing is if i'm just playing away but i speed up it will then 
crossfade into these performance roles. Okay, so it sounds like a real natural performance. Now you can play that in live, um, you can play it straight into a door, and it will create this, it, it just sounds incredibly natural. Now I did try and use the velocity, just see if that will affect it, sorry, the modulation. And it doesn't, but this is where you have the crossfade modulation rolls. Now, if I just play it quietly, you notice the hit at the end isn't a really big hit. I'll do it again. So I'm using a very low velocity. And it kind of just, you know, comes to a standstill. If I use a high velocity, you've got a more defined ending. And that's a feature you very rarely see in sample libraries. So every single instrument in this library has that feature. And again, that's a big innovation. Now, while these are great to play live and play directly into a door, I have recorded a small performance of some of these instruments. So as I'm going through the instruments, I'll put these performances on and you can see what's going on on the keyboard, in the door with the MIDI and just generally in the main window. So uh, here's the bongos. They're very, very simple rhythms, nothing too fancy, but you get a great idea of exactly what the drums sound like. So moving forwards, what I'm going to do is turn off the microphone so you can't hear all the mechanical sounds of me hitting my MIDI controller. And I'm gonna play all the instruments from the Perth Perk library. Now they're divided into different categories. So we have bongos, grand cassa, high and low surdos, high and low tycos, high and low toms, shakers, a snare, and timpanis. So I'm going to play all of these and where I've done a slightly more programmed extended performance, we we'll switch to that view as well so we can see how that works. So without further ado, here are all the instruments from the Perth Perk Volume 1 library.
Included in the instrument is a folder of bonus articulations. So most of the instruments also have scrapes, rubs, and different rolls. So for example, the Grand Casa can have a slow roll. And that changes speed as the roll progresses. Okay, and that's a slightly more straightforward one. And there's like a diminuendo effect. So it's really cool having these different articulations. I'll just play one more. For example, the high toms can have some scrapes. Now they are quite subtle sounds, but they can be good to add a little bit more texture to your performance rhythms. So I'm not gonna go through all of those, but there are, I'd say about 15 different articulations. The rolls are really, really useful. Uh, and like I say, the scrapes and the rubs can be used just to add a little bit more definition. Um, but yeah, so great bonuses from performance samples. Now you can see from the demonstration, there are plenty of timbres, lots of different percussion to use, and a lot of those rhythms can be played with just one hand. Activating those rolls is really quite effortless, and performance samples do say this can be used in a live performance. It takes a little bit of getting used to, because it's so uh, different, but we're saying 10 minutes maybe, and you'll be activating those rolls, no problem. Now look at the GUI, I said before, the performance samples, GYs are so clear and they have everything you need on there. So I'm going to use the low toms just to demonstrate this. Now on the left we have the mic mixer, so we have our close mic and our decker mic. So you can blend these, you can mute these, solo these, and you also have a microphone align button. You can change whether the instrument or the microphone is on the left or the right so you can create a bit of a stereo mix. Now there's roll CC which is assigning uh, how you trigger the rolls and the velocity. So on CC1 it's assigned to the mod wheel. There's transpose so you can move the actual keys that you play up and down which is really really useful. So if you use drum pads or a light block um, so, so anything like that where you might need to assign or change how it's triggered, that's really, really useful. Again, if you're building multi-contacts as well, that will make it really, really straightforward. You could litter the entire keyboard with different instruments from Perf Perk. So it's a really cool feature. Now there's a round, uh, sorry, round robin velocity, which you can obviously change. So if you have a higher or a lower velocity, when it does trigger a round robin, it will be louder or quieter. Um, looseness in the playable rolls and pitch bend. So the pitch bend will just change the, the pitch of the roll, make it higher or lower, and the looseness will, at 0%, it's going to make it really, really tight. And then as you change the looseness, it will make it a bit almost like human. Now, the one thing I've left till the last, uh, the last point is the Titan. One thing I absolutely love about performance samples is they have this little category saying uh, library limitations in on their website, and it just gives you information about the library. So they tell us that the samples uh, have an 80 millisecond delay. So you can set your track to 80 milliseconds, uh, seconds, sorry, or you can click the Titan button and it will make it minus 20. Now, I like using this on minus 20. It's very expressive, very responsive, and it's exactly what I'm looking for. And I do exactly the same thing on their fluid shorts libraries, which uh, I can't recommend enough. Um, so for short strings, they're absolutely brilliant and you can sort of play around with the human feel. So if you play it on, on 80 milliseconds, it will be a little looser and a little bit more human and dynamic. So that's the GUI. There is another page very, very quickly, uh, and you can change the velocity dynamic range, uh, compress it or expand it, and it will just give a, the instruments a smaller velocity. Uh, it, it's set from 1 to 27 at the moment, but you can narrow that if you don't want the extremes. And then the makeup, I did mess around with it, it just seems to change the overall output.
Okay, I'm not going to go too high because I don't want to blow on speakers. Uh, so uh, if there is a completely different use for that, please put that in the comments. But that's what I found that does. Now, while I'm really impressed with the timbre and the sound and the playability of the instruments, uh, it, it's almost effortless using these. One thing I will say is when you load the instruments up, you might get a little bit uh, dismayed maybe and think, oh, they don't, don't sound like the demos. And they don't straight out of the box. So with some performance samples libraries, I've noticed they're just a little bit on the quiet side. Now, I quite like that because I don't like opening a library. It's configured so it's really, really loud and it just dominates the mix or you know even gives you a little fright. What I like is all the performance samples libraries, you have to get in there and almost tweak it how you like it. So at the very, very simple instance, here's the low toms. Out of the box, all I'd probably do is just raise the close and the decker mics. And for playability, I'll click on the Titan. So some of these sound quieter than others. They do need a little bit of tweaking, but do not dismay because that's how the instruments are designed. And I think it's a really, really cool feature. So my final thoughts. Well, I'm really impressed with the library. The timbres, the sampling is absolutely brilliant. I love how performance samples have really thought about how they can progress this category of virtual instruments. So the percussion instruments now have these crossfade roles uh the the hit at the end of the timpani you know uh that's controlled by velocity that's a really cool feature and above all else they've made these percussion instruments really really straightforward to play so i think performance samples have taken a step in the right direction for a limitation i really could say well there aren't any metals because in a performance library, you'd expect some metals, but we have to remember this is volume one. On their website, they do say there are more volumes coming, which I'm sure will address the metals. Now, who is this library for? Well, it's for media composers, uh, so movies, TV games, cinema. Um, but if you wanted to just do straightforward, on their own percussion ensemble performances or recordings, this would be absolutely ideal. So for me, it covers a lot of ground. It is very obviously orchestral and very cinematic, but it's a excellent, well thought out percussion library. Thank you so much for checking out my review of Performance Samples Perf Perk Volume 1. Hit the like button if you think the review is helpful and informative. Please leave a comment and let us know what you think about the library. Do you think it will stand the test of time and be in your template forever? Head over to samplelibraryreview.com to check out all the latest and greatest in virtual instruments and of course check out our other video reviews. Have a great day and take care.